2 Samuel chapter 23 is where we'll be reading from tonight. 2 Samuel chapter 23. And we're going to start reading at verse number 8. I know we came to church prepared, so I know we got a Bible or at least we got a Bible app. Amen. Amen, church. All right. 2 Samuel chapter 23. And we're going to read verse 8 through verse 12. Verse 8 through verse 12. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. The Tacmonite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains, the same was Adino the Esnite. He lifted up his spear against 800 whom he slew at what? One time. Uh, hey, Marcus, play under me while I read this. All right, thank you. Nah, it makes me sound spiritual. Uh, and after, see, so much better already. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ohite. Oh, all right. Well, I'm just going to say it with confidence and I read Hebrew. All right. One of the three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. And he rose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a what? Mm, a great victory on that day. And the people returned after him, but only to spoil. And after him was Shammah, the son of A.G., the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. My last verse. But he stood. He stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great Hallelujah. A great, a great victory. I'm going to get you an opportunity to be seated, but your uh, permission to sit down tonight is that you got to make this declaration. Shout at somebody, tell them it's all about the harvest. It's all about the harvest. Yes, sir. It's all about the harvest, Pastor Adam. Y'all be seated. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's all about the harvest the book of Samuel which is divided into two first and second Samuel is where we are introduced uh, to the ministry of uh, Eli Eli a man who served Israel uh, in a priestly manner uh, but the Bible declares that in the ministry of Eli was compromise and this is why we need times of consecration and times of fasting and praying because you can find yourself building and building and building and marketing and marketing and serving and serving, preaching and preaching and not have checked in lately with the person that call you to do it. You know, it's, I say it often, it's possible to do church without doing God. And you can find yourself climbing to the top of the church ladder just to find out you're up against the wrong building. Times of fasting and praying is a time of realignment. I need you to tell your neighbor, tell him, I know you're anointed. But ask him, have you had an oil change lately? I'm not going to preach long tonight. I'm just going to say what the Lord say. You got to make sure every so often. There's some maintenance needs to take place. My uh, sprinter in which I commute between here and Virginia in uh, was in an accident uh, about a year ago. And I'm just getting it back uh, because the parts uh, were foreign parts. And because of the P-51 
pandemic, um, it, manufacturing was really set back. And so when I got the Sprinter back, the issue that I had with it is someone had hit the side door of it. And so uh, when I got the Sprinter back, all I needed was the door repair. That's all I needed. But after getting it back, there were other things out of whack. Uh, you know, I had to change the fluids. Uh, other electrical things started taking, uh, taking place. And I found out that even if you sit still, you know, I know you need maintenance if you're going up and down the road and you're working hard. But even we who are stuck in holding patterns, going through mundane routines, still need an oil change. Mm, hallelujah. You know your ties can wear out. Sit still. My God. They call it rotten out. Uh-huh. Mm. And so as we tonight uh, uh, look at the ministry of Eli, Eli was anointed, but he was operating a spirit of compromise. And maybe compromise comes about in our lives because we become common with the things of God. Glory be to God. After a while, we get the mentality uh, that we're so needed that we can't be replaced. I know y'all won't go say too many amens to here, but this is just the way I talk. I need you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, we all can be replaced. To every Elisha, there's an Elisha. To every Moses, there's a Joshua. Hallelujah. You can't be replaced. And so that's why every once in a while I sing songs like I'm glad to be in the service one more time. David says, I, if I could just be a doorkeeper in the house of God. I know I got some people in here that still can testify. I don't have to do this. I get to do this. You know we need an oil change when you got to beg people to do stuff that they said God called them to do. Our flyers are not for sinners. I'm going to say it again. Our flyers are not for sinners. We don't post these flyers trying to get sinners to come to church. We post flyers trying to get the saints that already belong to our church to show up in the place that they've been called to show up to. But I need you to look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, we need to get back to God. We need to get back to God. We need to get our fire back again. We need to get our zeal back again. We need to get our passion back again. We have lost our curiosity for God. We have lost our inquiry. Listen what David said in Psalm 27 verse 4. He says, not a whole lot of things, hallelujah, but one thing have I desired of the Lord. And that one thing will I seek after. I need you to push somebody. Tell them I'm still in pursuit. I'm still. I'm st that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold, hallelujah, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Why for in the time of trouble? He shall hide me. Don't lose your curiosity. If you're bored with this, you ain't in this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The old saints used to say, every day with Jesus, glory be to God, is sweeter than the day before. I need you to push somebody on the left and the right of you and tell them, look at them again. Look at them again. See, when you start looking away from God, hallelujah, you start losing your zeal. When you take your eyes off of God and start looking at folk, folk will depend pleat you and drain you uh, David says my foot almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked some of you won't do what God called you to do because you're looking in the wrong direction I need you to push somebody tell them stop looking at folk and get your focus back on God I can't worry about what they doing across the street I can't worry about what they doing in another church I got to mind my business I got to stay on my post hallelujah because only what you do for Christ glory be to God is going to last John heard Paul says looking unto Jesus looking unto Jesus looking unto Jesus looking unto Jesus I need you to look at your neighbor tell your neighbor get your focus back get your focus back I heard hey I heard the Pauline epistle say you did run well you were doing good you were serving well hallelujah you were trying to live a holy life you did run well he didn't say what hindered you it says who my God and I can tell by some of you sitting here tonight or uh, who didn't got a hold to you hallelujah you hey, you were on fire for God but a who gotta tell your neighbor who is your who who is your who you better get your mind back on Jesus 
Ila. 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 I don't know why Eli allowed his sons to operate in the temple unchecked. I can, the, the way I used to preach about Eli is a little different than the way I preach about him now. I was real rough on Eli, you know, when I first came into this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because when I first came in, this, I was, uh, I'm still holy. But when I first came in this, it was I, I, I was holy before the fall. Okay. Now see, the way you talk and the way you uh, critique people on this side, it's a little different than the way you critique them on the other side. I need you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, be careful how you handle people when they fall. Just tell him you ain't dead yet. You're not dead. You're not dead yet. All of us, we got to take heed lest we fall. So, I'm, so I need, instead of uh, being very critical of him, I want to analyze the situation. Why would a man used greatly by God would then start compromising and allowing his sons to operate unholy in the temple? My goodness. Well, I want to lift to you that it may be that Eli got tired. <sighs> because there's something that's arresting the conviction of the saints. It's called exhaustion and fatigue. My, there used to be a time you tried to operate in discipline. But now discipline costs you too much energy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You, you, you used to try to live a consecration life instead of, you know, having moments of consecration. But holiness ain't always convenient. And sometimes it's easier to flow down the stream than to swim against the waves. And there used to be a time you tried to hold people around you accountable. Hallelujah. But after a while, you just get tired. You just get tired. You get, you get tired of telling the choir members to hold up a certain standard. You get, you get tired, oh my goodness, of looking for the intercessors to pray. You get tired of trying to hold the musicians to a life of consecration. So instead of challenging, you start compromising. Oh my God. Well, I feel a little tightness in here tonight. But I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you got to cry loud and spare night. You got to cry loud and spare night. If you should Shut your mouth, somebody gonna die. You better open up your mouth and uh, you better open up your mouth so somebody can live. Somebody I want you to touch three people in here and tell them speak the truth. Speak the truth even when the truth is against you. Speak the truth when it's against your kids. Speak the truth, oh my God, when it's against your biggest tie payers. Speak the truth when it's against the best musicians you got and the most talented and the gifted people. Because if you don't speak, if you start compromising, you're going to look up one day and you're going to have good church but with the name Ichabod written across the wall you know how many people are having church with no glory you know how people got good singing with no glory but I need somebody to open up your mouth and shout I want the glory because because he compromised God raises up a holy replacement. And this is what I feel prophetically in this hour. This is a hour of holy replacement. Now, I'm not talking about God putting people in place because they're jealous of who are already in place. Holy replacements. Where God brings down one. Hallelujah. And he raises up. I'm telling you for real. I'm almost finished. Well, he'll take down one and he'll raise up another. Because promotion does not come from you trying to smooch up beside somebody. Promotion doesn't come. Hallelujah. For you trying to make connections in the flesh. Come, promotion comes from God. Hallelujah. He says, if you humble yourself. I'm going to say it again. He says, if you humble yourself. I'm going to say it one more time. Because some of us are trying to be so grand that we're missing out on God. God's promotion just because people like you don't mean God is promoting you and if you let people raise you up they'll do you a really bad 
disservice. When they get tired of you and when you stop lining their pockets, they will let you down. But if you humble yourself, oh, before the mighty hand of God, he'll exalt you in due time. I want you to pull on somebody and tell them this is my due time. This is my, I didn't beg for it. I was called for it. This is my due time. He, y'all be seated and I'm going to finish up. He was replaced by a Samuel. He was, and Samuel is called by God. Not only is he called by God, he was asked. He was asked of God. That's what his name means. Why? Because a woman by the name of Hannah, who did not have a child, said, Lord, I need a child. I need a child, Lord. I need a child. I need a child, Lord. Please, Lord, Lord. Please, Jesus. I need a child, Lord. I need a child, Lord. And the Bible says the priest walks in and rebukes her. He mislabeled her and still had the power to bless her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you better be careful who you dismiss. Hallelujah. I need you to look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor there's some power on this pew. I ain't got everything right. I don't doubt every high. I don't cross every team. My eyes may be dim, but I can rebuke cancer off of somebody's body. He still had the power to bless. And some of us are so easily offended. We're too offended to get a miracle. We're too sensitive to get a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Every time somebody don't say it the way you think they should have said it or they misinterpreted you. Now you sit out of church for two weeks as though you're punishing somebody. My God, but at some point you got to grow up in God. This is not a daycare. This is a military. I need you to scream. We got to grow up in God. We, we too deep in this thing now to be repeating some of the same lessons over and over. He rebuked her and then turned around and blessed her. And what she gave birth to became his replacement. But isn't it something? If we don't take a moment and stand back to look at the pattern. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you want to say. I know you want to talk about that generation and that generation. But you're going to be that generation. If you don't stand back. You know, it's easy to criticize your parents and criticize your daddy. But what happens when you become that same demon? If you, if you don't sit with it and find the root system. Hallelujah. You're going to bear the same type of fruit. Because look at Samuel. Samuel raises his sons in the temple. And, there, and there's a reoccurring pattern. Somebody, don't look at your neighbor. Just say, it happened again. Yeah. I want you to say it one more time. This is not a touch your neighbor. I want you to say it out of your mouth. Say, it happened again. While we're in this consecration, we're going to shout, we're going to cry, we're going to speak in tongues. But you don't have to dismiss your mind to be saved. God is an intellectual God. He's not anti-science, he's omniscience. He's all-knowing, he's all-knowledge. While we're in consecration, in the midst of our, uh, our soaking and our travailing prayer, and our moanings and our groanings and our spiritual language, Get still and say, hold on, I've been here before. And I want to say this because we have people who come to church services for, for an event. But God don't want us to keep coming to church for an event. We need to come to church for an encounter. I need, oh my God, i am come to tell somebody tonight, you're going to be able to trace your deliverance back to this month. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. See, I want much praise on that, right? Because that ain't a check by March. No, no. But I said, you're going to be able to trace your deliverance. And a lot of saints don't want to reach up and receive that because you think that exposes that you're not saved. But it's possible to be saved and still not delivered. I know y'all don't believe that. I know that may be a little theological challenge. Soteriology is a little complicated. But I'm telling you, you can be saved when, Jesus, when God Jehovah will bring you out of Egypt and you are truly delivered from Egypt. But it's going to take about 40 years to get Egypt out of you. Hey, the reason why some of us went back to what God brought us out of is not that the salvation didn't stick. We never got to the altar to get delivered. We normalized our patterns because we sat around undelivered saints and we started comparing ourselves to their dysfunction. But I need you to scream at somebody and tell them, I want to be well. I want to be whole. I want to be delivered. Touch three people. I need three. I need people to prophesy with me. Touch three people. Tell them, look at the pattern. Look at the pattern. Look at the pattern. Look at the pattern. These, these ain't even your demons you fight. I said, these ain't even your demons. Some of you fight your papa's demons. Some of y'all fight Mima's demons. Some of you fight your hey, Some of you fight your mama's demons. Don't you know that a family member can die, but that demon stays in the earth? Everybody want to shout about the mantle, but the mantle ain't the only thing left in the earth. We're fighting some trauma. We're fighting something that has gotten a breach in our household. But God is raising up a generation that's going to be the repair of the breach. I need you to open up your mouth and shout because it's ending now. It's ending. It's ending now. It didn't start with you but it's ending now. It didn't start with you but it's ending with you. The step you didn't even know about. You thought something was wrong with you. But it's a bloodline curse. It's not that you won't serious. It's that you didn't label it right. Hey, this ain't just the way you are. It's a root system. But tonight I'm coming for the root. I need about 75 intercessors to open up your mouth and pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. Not another generation. Not another generation. Not another generation. Not another generation. You won't plague another generation. You're not going to plague my siblings. You're not going to plague my cousins. I'm coming for that demon. I'm coming for the neck of the giant that's trying to destroy my brother. I'm coming for that spirit of addiction. I see the pattern. I see the pattern. I see the pattern. Buckets of blood against you. Buckets of blood against you. Buckets of blood against you. Buckets of blood. Blood. I need you to get out of your seat and run to somebody. Tell them, I'm coming for the neck tonight. I'm coming for the neck of it. I'm coming. I'm putting my foot on the neck of the enemy tonight. All right, be seated really quickly. Next time we stand, we'll close. Coming for the neck. You want to cut the head off, but you got to put your foot on the neck first. Put your foot. Hey, hallelujah. You got to consciously, soberly look at what you're going to destroy and declare you're not getting back up again. Oh, shut up, mother, y'all. Hey, 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 you're not getting back up again. I'm taking Goliath's sword. I'm taking the enemy's sword. And I'm declaring he get back up. For the Egyptians you see today, every hunching, you'll see no more. They ever do. So Samuel, of course, leads as a judge and a priest for season. I'll advance very quickly. Uh, Saul comes to the throne because Saul was the people's choice. 
But then God rejected Saul and let Saul serve. God rejected him and let him serve. Would it be a tragedy if you thought your ability to serve meant that you were in right standing with God? Bible says there are vessels of honor and there are vessels of dishonor. Just because you're still on the floor don't mean you haven't been called out. I need you to tell your neighbor it's important to me that I'm still saved. No, 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 no. I don't have to be a preacher, but I do need to be saved. Take my church if you gotta take it. But don't take my side. I got to be saved. I want to be saved. After all, you tell me after all of these years of doing church, out of all of these years of shut-ins and proud meetings and choir rehearsals and youth groups, it's important to me that I'm, that I'm saved. So the Bible says, yes, you're doing, you out there serving, but examine yourself to make sure not that you're of the church, but to make sure you're still of the faith. Because the Bible says in the last days, many shall depart, not from the church, but from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And you tell me people are not being contaminated through their ear gates with doctrines of devils? People who used to be passionate about God, now they're sitting in the sanctuary with a question mark above their head. And let me tell you something, I got a whole lot of questions about God. There's a whole lot about God I do not understand. As a matter of fact, if I wrote the Bible, there's some things I probably would have changed and shifted and it made it a little different, but he didn't ask my permission. But one thing I do know, God filled me. I, something I cannot deny. He at 12 years old, I was around the altar in, in, on a Wednesday night in Gretna, Virginia, tarrying, tarrying. Now, let me tell you, I know tarrying is a, a, archaic for so many people and it's a traditional cultural posture and maybe we don't have to do it because it's a gift. But something happened huh, somewhere between Jesus, Jesus, Jesus and G, 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 something. I can't deny it. I can't deny it. I'm not saying you gotta do it like that, but something happened when I was. And I know some of you are there, part of that new charismatic apostolic movement where y'all come out with these Japanese tongues as soon as you got saved. And it ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm proud of you. But I'm telling you, I started with the stammering lips. And every once in a while, hallelujah, when I ask God to do it in me again, I go back to my first language. I go back to what I know was real. You can't make me doubt it. You can't make me doubt it. Help me. You can't make me doubt it. Why? I know too much. I'm in too deep. Lay hands on somebody show to tell them I'm still pulling from an experience. That's why when some folk left the church, I stayed. Not because I never got hurt. Not because I never got mad. Not because I never backslid. But I stayed because I'm still pulling. Oh, I'm still pulling from an experience. Hey, uh, limitations of this are called to my mind. Because sometimes my mind will try to slip. And the devil will start playing with my mind. But this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I, I, I the Lord's blessing that we are not consumed. Can I go a little further? And his compassion. His compassion. Hell no. Nah, they are new. You ought to take your 30 seconds and praise them for new verses. You got 15 seconds left to praise them for new verses. He's faithful. He's faithful. I want faithful and he's faithful.
energy, when you start pulling back, you start pulling from that old experience, you don't need a click track. Because my old experience in God, the musicians never started. Right. 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 Come out of a song. Come out of a testimony. And then all of a sudden. I need you to point to somebody. Tell them I promise you. I dance in my house. This ain't just something I do in church. I promise you. If you think this is something. At home I'm Baptist. If you think this is something, at home I need to smell it so. You better lift your hands, he's giving it back to you. Lift up your hands, he's giving it back to you. Lift up your hands, he's giving it back to you. Take me back, take me back, take me back. Take me back. Take me back. When it wasn't about a title, take me back. When it wasn't about a collar, take me back. Take me back. Take me back when I had the conviction. Take me back when I was sensitive. And, he, and I would feel God wake me up in the middle of the night. Take me back when the, when the words holy, holy, holy used to come up out of my mouth. Take me Somebody shout, I remember. No, don't say it. Somebody shout, I remember. Ask y'all to be seated. So now, it's in the book of Samuel that we're introduced to one of the. Y'all be seated over here. Y'all be seated. But we're introduced to one of the major key protagonists. And it's still feeding me. Huh? doing all this preaching? I got an experience with God. How you dealing with the pressure? Tell somebody, I had an experience with God. And it's still feeding me. It's, I'm sorry, it's still sorry d and I don't want to embarrass y'all, but I feel the I built a 3024. Knock the chairs over for you. It's still feeding me. I know what I heard. I know what I felt. Other, other than Jesus, other than Yeshua, the most popular historical biblical character. So I don't like to just say biblical character because it comes off as a fictional story. But the, the, the second most popular historical yes, sir. biblical character yes, sir. is David. Yes sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, people who don't even read the Bible. Talk, sir. They know about David and Goliath. Yes, sir. King David. Yes, sir. We name our children David. And we celebrate. Hey. 
the heroism of, of David. Uh -huh. yes, sir. How that when David is serving under his father-in-law Saul, and Saul gave him an impossible military feat right. uh -huh. of requesting the foreskins off of a thousand Philistines. Yes, sir. When he came back superseding the quarter, they started singing in the Israeli palace. Yes, sir. Saul has killed his thousands. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But David but has David. killed his <laughs> ten thousand. Bishop, how fluent and creative that he is that he has dirty hands ah. Oh for battle. Talk to you. Talk to you. But yet soft enough to play the lyre. Look at the spectrum and the scope wow. of this man. You're working, sir. You're working. You're working. Who is delicate enough for male companionship. I don't want to get into that. But a testosterone of masculinity enough for multiple women. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The old song would say, what a man, what a man. I don't know what a mighty good man, but that's a man. Multi-layered, diversified, complicated, but yet you can't deny, you can't deny the strength and the dynamic characteristics of David. And so this text tonight is David at the end of his reign. Yes, sir. Because I don't believe Death takes the saints by surprise. Yes, sir. No, really. If you think about, I know Mother So and So died not too long ago, but if you think about it, she was preparing us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She said something. You know, it, it didn't make sense when she was talking, and you almost overlooked it. But when somebody said, "You know, Mother So and So passed," you're like, "Are you serious?" But you know, Sunday. She got up and she stood just like that. You know, all of these things become illuminated because I don't believe death takes the saints by surprise. Yes, sir. According to the scripture, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I know we say, you know, you know, oh, so sorry. We're not sorry for us because we're left here. We call this the land of the living. This is really the land of the dying. Everything here is dying. Right. Yes, sir. Right. And so. David knows not only his, is his reign coming to an end, but his life is coming to an end. Yes, sir. And as much as we celebrate David, David says, before I close out this chapter, right. yes, sir. it's time for me to first give an honor to God. Yeah. <coughs> but there's some other people I need to call by now. You know how we used to say in the church, say, I can't call everybody's name, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention they're special people, yes, individuals. Yes. Uh, David says, what I'm trying to tell you is although you celebrate me, ha. I didn't get here by myself. Talk about it. You are working, sir. You working, Bishop. I need you to tell your neighbor as anointed as you are. Tell him, be honest, be honest, be honest. Somebody helped you. All of you got a sad story about the church. Everybody got a traumatic story about the church. But you better thank God for the people who walked over and shook your hand. And you opened it up when you got to the car and it was $20. And they did not even know that your gas tank was on in. You better thank God for the people that when you were sitting in the pew and tears were coming down your face. And you felt like you were on the verge of a nervous breakdown. And one of the saints came behind you and put their arms around you and ask you no questions but started to rock you said baby it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right you got to remember those who pulled you out and they saw something in you before the crowd did before the crowd did before the don't you ever get elevated Above the people who help you stay. Don't you ever walk past the people who taught you how to walk? Don't you ever get don't you get ever get so expanded that you feel you have outgrown the people who taught you how to hear? Bishop! Come on, Bishop. You 
talking right, careful. sir. Somebody asked me in an interview not too long ago, and they said, Bishop Younger, everybody's calling your name. And they said, well, how do you handle, how are you handling that? I said, handling what? You know, people are calling your name. I said, oh, those are the masses. Yes, sir. Bishop. And masses swap up on you at any given moment. You, you better stay sober. There's some people only want to be connected to you because somebody else want to be connected to you. When nobody wanted you, they had no time for you. Oh my God. As a matter of fact, they broke up with you. But now because somebody is showing you attention, now they text you talking about what you doing, big head. I'm in the bed. Don't text me. I got to work in the morning. W-Y-D, what you doing? Praying? I'm in consecration. People have this herd mentality where we run to something just because everybody, we don't see value in it until other people want it. Like we're paying all that money for that, that cup now. No, you won't thinking about that cup. But because somebody else wanted a Stanley cup. Now we're knocking over shelves trying to get a cup that we walked past for years and never paid attention to. Don't you switch up on people who've been committed to you just because a crowd is now looking your direction. David says, yes, I've had an army of men. I had an army of men. I had men out of every tribe, but at the end of my life, it was about 33. Uh, I don't want you to scream because I've had you screaming a lot tonight. I want you to just look at somebody real sober and tell them, you may not have as many friends as you think. Some of y'all already got the revelation. Y'all looking at me like, I already know. I already know. Now I'm telling you, if you got three good friends, I'm not, listen, sometimes your family members are your family members. They're not your friends. Some of them, you can't trust them. Everybody that I go to church with, and I'm not being negative, but everybody that go to my church don't come to my house. And you're not going to make me feel obligated because you don't bring everybody to your house either. Everybody you work with don't ride in your car. Out of all the people that I had in the palace, out of all the men I had fighting with me, I really only had 33. There was really only a remnant. He said, to the point, like for real, for real, one day the men went to fight and I had an Eleazar that he had something in his hand. And the Bible said, watch out, cook. watch out, Antoine, watch out. The Bible says when he went to fight, listen, his hand got weary. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the book. So if, if your hand get weary, yeah. you let go of your weapon. Right. Right. That's the book. Come on here. But the Bible said Talk, sir. he was so postured. Yes, sir. Mm. This is what I'm trying to. At some point, you got to train your flesh. So even when your flesh quits, it's still in position. My, you got to train your flesh. Don't let my God. And listen, I have funeral directors in my church and, and people who work in mortuary science. And so they were telling me one day, they said it was a man that all of his life, he was bent a certain way. All of his life, he was, he was disabled. So to the point when he died, of course, uh, that uh, that rigor mortis. Yeah, help me. Yes. Got him stuck there. They said they almost had to break him. Right, right. Literally. They had to break him Literally. to lay him flat in the casket. God says this is the hour where you got to be so postured in prayer that when your flesh is tired of praying, your spirit will pick it up. You got to be. 
be so postured in holiness that even when your flesh makes a decision, it's going to submit to his feelings. You find yourself on your way to prayer service and say, how did I get over here? Because this won't in my plan. As a matter of fact tonight, somebody in this room, it won't in your plan to be in church, but God got you postured. And he held on. Tell your neighbor, hold on to your weapon. Uh, I'm going to skip to the, to the end. Of then he says this. And this is the situation. This is the crazy thing. The Bible says in all of these cases, the military ran. Right. And one person was left to fight. That tells me everybody that comes with the uniform don't show up to fight. All right. And he ends with one of the top three. Shama. Shama. I like a church that like the Bible. Y'all like the Bible. I like the Bible. Shama. Shama, see, ain't this some, some of the saints been speaking in tongues with Shama all these years? Shama. Uh, I'm serious. I know I heard it years ago with one of the saints. The Bible said the Philistines came down to destroy the harvest. Historically, it's believed that it happened more than one. Philistines had plenty of agriculture. But it, seem, it seems like they were standing on the mountains of Moab and watch the Israelites sow seeds. Watch the seeds germinate. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch them come up through the surface and wait for harvest and then attack. I said all this. Tonight's message was really not about Eli as much as I talked about it. Right. Or his sons, Samuel or his sons, or even David. <laughs> this message tonight is about the harvest. Yes, sir. Uh, I want you to get a revelation about what the fight is really about. Because the enemy could have attacked you at any given time. Yes. Why now? Why has the warfare been so intense lately? Why have the people you've known forever are acting strange around you now? Why are you dealing with demons you ain't never had to deal with before? Why do you feel yourself experiencing infirmities and afflictions in your body? Scream at somebody, tell them it's all about the harvest. You thought maybe you made the wrong turn. You made the wrong decision. Or maybe you should retreat. But I want you to consider that the only reason why this season has been so challenging is because you're closer to the reaping. Oh, I need a praise right in here. I need a praise right here. You are closer. I need a praise in here. You are closer to the reaping than you've ever been before in your life. I'm, the, I'm speaking to somebody's spirit. I'm coming beyond your flesh because the enemy been talking and some of you have been second guessing your assignment. But I need somebody to jump up and shout, I'm closer to the reaping. I thought about quitting, but I changed my mind. I'm closer to the reaping. I thought about resigning, but I changed my mind. I'm closer to the Closer to the reap. And I told you, historically, uh, they believe it, it, it happened more than once. That every time the harvest would come, the men would come, the Philistines would come down on their horses. Not coming for the Israelites, coming for their harvest. Why exhaust your energy running behind every Israelite? 
just destroy their food source. See, the enemy want to starve some of us. And some of us don't realize we've been experiencing a slow spiritual death. Woo. Hallelujah. A slow spiritual where your, your conviction is not the way it used to be. On, if you miss church, it's okay. I mean, if I go, if I go, but Come if it don't on. work out, it don't work Come out. On, do it. A, a slow death. Slow death. And it seemed like this time when everybody ran, Shama said, no, man. No, 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 no. And listen what Shama did. He didn't stay on the edge. Because to stay on the edge means if it don't work out, I can run. Yes, sir. That's right. The Bible said he stood in the middle of the harvest field. I need you to push somebody to tell them, get in the middle. If you're really expecting God to do something, hallelujah. Come on, I want you to lift your hands. I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to pray for the shamas in this room. While everybody else is running and doing their own thing, I'm going to ask God to give you strength. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I pray that you are blessed by the message today. And if you want to continue to get more inspirational, motivational, and even more gospel messages, I encourage you to follow our YouTube channel or subscribe to our podcast. And today we want to give you an opportunity to partner what we're doing domestically here at our local church and what we're doing all over the world. There are ways to give. And remember, when you sow, that seed may leave your hand, but it'll never leave your life. The Bible declares to us that when we sow, Seeds are connected to harvest. Well, I want you to remember that I know what it feels like to cry until you have no more tears left to cry. But after you finish crying, don't stop. Get up and keep going.